What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 10 times WWE foolishly turn great wrestlers into jobbers. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, sometimes Vince McMahon uh doesn't see what the fans see, doesn't see the hype, or doesn't believe in the hype. So someone that you thought should have been a main event player or at least upper card player turns into a JAG very quickly. So we're gonna check out some of these moments where we thought these guys were main eventers and they instantly, well not instantly, over time they turned into jobbers very quickly. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. It's by WrestleMania. Let's get right into this one, man. Most frustrating things about a WWE fan is seeing WWE turn a talented performer into a jobber. This happens so many times throughout WWE history and someone who is a solid mid carder or even a potential main eventer is reduced to an enhancement talent meaning they lose all their matches and mainly exist to put over other wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE turned a great talent into a jobber. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Drew McIntyre. Mm. Now between 2009 to 2010, it looks set that Drew McIntyre was going to be the next big thing in the company. Vince yeah. McMahon had even christened McIntyre as the chosen one, so it seemed like WWE was set on making McIntyre a huge deal. However, McIntyre didn't have what WWE wanted, and although he was insanely talented, WWE slowly but surely turned him into a jobber. Yep. They would pair him with Heath Slater and Jinder Mahal in 3MB, and he would turn into a comedic jobber. What was insane about this was that during McIntyre's time as a jobber, his in-ring work vastly improved, and it was evident that McIntyre had found his fire. But this sadly wasn't enough for WWE, as he would remain in the stagnant position. McIntyre would even lose a match to El Torito on Raw before <laughs> oh his premature God, release in dog. 2014. Thankfully, McIntyre was able to return a number of years later, and since then, he's firmly been presented as one of the top stars in the company and has yeah. even made evented WrestleMania alongside Brock Lesnar. Number 9, yeah, Heath Slater. True. Speaking of 3MB, one of the other members of the infamous stable, Heath Slater, was also mistreated in WWE. Slater, following the breakup of the lackluster core stable, emerged as one of the breakout stars. Slater was charismatic and could truly go in the ring. He would spend years in a job role, but that was until 2016 where he was involved in a free agent storyline on SmackDown, which was universally acclaimed. Slater was <laughs> tremendous in this role and WWE had made a solid mid-carder. But after the storyline was over, Slater moved back down the card yep. to jobber status. He was eventually released in 2020, which shocked fans as well as fellow WWE talent as Slater had a phenomenal reputation and was well liked by everyone backstage. That's Number 8, crazy. Mickey James. When Mickey James returned to WWE TV in 2017, fans expected big things. Mm -hmm. Mickey was a certified legend and could still actively hang with anyone on the Jeez. women's roster. However, just a few short weeks into her return, it was evident that she was brought back exclusively to put over new female talent. This was disappointing, and over time, fans simply stopped caring. Why root for which which kind of sucks is a lot of people, you know, respect Mickey James and especially what she can do in the ring. And she literally came back as a enhancement talent. It was like, uh, I don't know about that. Considering she can still go, uh, I think that's not the best use for her, in my opinion. For a legend, if it's already 99% guaranteed that they're going to lose, WWE did a massive disservice with Mickey's return for sure. run. And hopefully, if Mickey ever decides to return again, she's given the treatment she deserves and isn't treated like a complete jobber. Yeah. Number seven, Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder's influence on pro wrestling, particularly in the early mm -hmm. 2010s, can never be diminished. Ryder managed to get himself over by creating his own YouTube show, and this type Bro, we had never seen nothing like that. He got over because of social media, because of YouTube. We had never seen anyone. He was, I, I think he is the ver very first person that I can think of that got over despite pretty much not being cared about on the main roster he got over he reached the brass ring by himself without management i think he's the very first person in wwe history and wrestling to get over through social media like that he pioneered it 
That was dope. Type of content was extremely rare at the time, meaning that Ryder mm -hmm. certainly opened the door for other talent to find fame and fortune in this manner. Mm -hmm. Whilst Ryder was vastly popular online and this was slowly transitioning to TV, WWE were reluctant to use Ryder in a substantial oh, role. Man. He was a solid hand and had an infectious personality that was badly needed on WWE TV at the time. Ryder had sporadic pushes throughout his tenure, including a US title win in 2011, as well as an IC Championship mm -hmm. win at WrestleMania. Mania 32, but these were extremely brief. Yep. When these reigns came to a close, Ryder was straight back down the card, ready to put over any talent WWE saw fit. WWE truly failed to understand why Ryder was popular Bro, and Dolph how they could have made that. a huge financial <laughs> gain with a prominent, sustained push for the talented star, but their stubbornness simply stopped this from happening. Number 6. Dominic Dajakovic Mm. Upon it surfacing online that WWE were calling up NXT star Dominic Dajakovic, fans were excited. He yeah. was someone, well, on paper at least, that Vince McMahon should have loved. He Love had that, size, hoodie, presence, Rest and could peace, seriously Kobe. go when the bell rang. WWE's bizarre idea for the NXT staple was to turn him into a character known as T-Bar, and he would be part of the infamous Retribution stable. Mm -hmm. As part of his new character, he would wear a mask and there would be virtually no mention of his prior NXT persona. His moveset was vastly altered and his match quality suffered as a result. Naturally, this didn't get over well and instead of reverting to the Dajakovic character, WWE decided to punish him and turn him into a jobber. He would lose every single match for what seemed like years on end. This became incredibly frustrating and was such a waste of someone who could have really helped the roster depth on the main roster. Facts. Eventually, in 2022, they decided to have Dajakovic return to NXT. Why this took so long is anyone's guess. And he's been doing some pretty good work down there. It's just, I don't, uh, yeah, makes no sense. <laughs> it doesn't, it just, it doesn't. Number five, Mustafa Ali. In 2019, Mustafa Ali found his groove on the main roster. He was inserted into the main event scene on SmackDown, and mm -hmm. thanks to Ali's incredible in-ring work, as well as fantastic side characters such as Daniel Bryan and Samoa Joe, Ali became universally loved by the fans. Sadly, an injury halted Ali's yep, push, and at on one forge. stage, he was even rumored for a WWE title match with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 35, but this injury obviously canceled these plans. When Ali eventually Hulk. returned from injury, it was clear that WWE still saw bright things in Ali's future, and he was even rumored to win the Money in the Bank ladder match, but WWE eventually decided to go with Brock Lesnar. But it was after this that things <laughs> began to change, and WWE seemingly overnight decided that Ali was now going to be a jobber moving forward. Yep, Ali would lose match after match, and even when he would lead the Retribution stable in 2020 as a heel, he seemed to lose more matches than he won. Ali reportedly requested his release because he had enough of his WWE run. But this was refused. Although mm -hmm. Ali had won a few matches on TV in recent months, it's clear that WWE still sees him at a certain level, and that's unlikely to ever change. Number 4. Status. Earthquake Earthquake during the early 90s was a reliable talent that WWE could always count on for a solid match. He was safe, well-liked, and was over with the fan base. When he returned to WWE in 1998, the landscape was vastly different, as WWE were in full swing with the Attitude Era. This meant that WWE would give him a brand new character, and they were clearly mocking the great wrestler with his new persona. Earthquake would become Golga, he would wear a mask, and his entire gimmick was based on the fact that he was a huge fan of South Park's Eric Cartman. He would be a part of the Oddity stable, and it didn't take long for WWE to give up on this stable. The All hell? members of the group, including Golga, became jobbers. He would lose endless matches, and it was a massive waste of someone who could have added experience and depth to the Attitude roster. Damn. Number 3. Eric Young TNA legend Eric Young signing with WWE was yeah. a huge deal, and when Young debuted in NXT, he was presented rather well. Young mm -hmm. would great the Sanity stable, and this was very popular with NXT. Sanity was a, a, a cool little stable they had, man, especially in NXT. T fans, but when the group was called up to the main roster, everything just went wrong. They were yep. barely used as a faction, and eventually Vince McMahon decided to split the stable up. And in the process, Young would turn into WWE's new resident yeah, jobber. jobber. This was incredibly depressing to watch, as Young had so much to offer. He was very much an all-rounder, but McMahon just couldn't care less. Mm -hmm. Young was relegated to WWE main event, where he would stay for the rest of his WWE tenure. He was eventually released in 2020, making WWE's treatment of Young one of the biggest missed opportunities in recent yeah, memory. He deserves Number two, so much Dolph better. Ziggler. Ooh. A former world champion Dolph Ziggler yeah. has had one of the more unusual career trajectories in WWE. 
He's been given a number of pushes, but these pushes are never long term. Nope. And when these are over, Ziggler falls dramatically down the card and yep. he just seems to lose every single match he's booked in. This is rather unusual as WWE only likes Ziggler to start winning matches when they need him to enter into a prominent feud. Yeah, that's this it. usually involves Ziggler putting over another talent. This booking pattern... Like when he just randomly won the NXT Championship, I was like, uh... Okay? <laughs> just so random. And has led to fans simply not caring about what Ziggler brings to WWE as he loses too much to be taken seriously. And it could be argued that he's WWE's permanent yet highly decorated jobber. Which WWE is wild have to had say. so many opportunities to push him to the moon and keep him there, but there's always been something holding him back from fully investing in him. And number one, Cody Rhodes. Oh, it's hard man. to believe that before Cody Rhodes was one of the top baby faces in WWE, he was a permanent jobber mm -hmm. who would mainly feature on WWE's main event. When Rhodes turned into the infamous Stardust character in 2014, everything changed. The character failed to take off and WWE eventually gave up on presenting Rhodes as a major player. This is very he true. mainly on TV to lose and it was frustrating to watch as a viewer, especially knowing that Rhodes had potential to become a main eventer in WWE. He left in 2016 as he knew his worth and this would be a decision that would change his life. Yep. Rhodes would be a pillar of the AEW brand and eventually he would be in a position to return to WWE in 2020. Since then, Rhodes has been presented as an absolute megastar. But it was still a massive shame that WWE turned the elite talent into a jobber during his final months of his initial run in the company. But they have it, folks. Ten times done. This is very true. If Cody just stayed the course and never decided to bet on himself and left or stayed in WWE, we wouldn't have the Cody we have now. He bet on himself. He knew his worth. He left. And when it was time for him to leave AEW, they knew he's the guy. Simple as that. He made himself into the guy. And sometimes you have to do that, especially in wrestling. Vince may not see it, but you may see it. So you got to go and let other people see it to the point where they are like, hey, we need you back. And then you have some power over what needs to be done for your character. You can demand the high dollar because they need you. They want you. The show will go on without you, but they really want you and they're going to show how much they want you. It's crazy to say the top baby face right now used to be a J.A.G. damn near. We knew who Cardi was, but they treated him like a J.A.G. Comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers you feel like definitely should have been at the upper to top uh top of the wrestling card in wwe but they just decided to them decided to treat them continuously like jags just another guy or jobbers let me know down below if they weren't on in the on this list but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still young to be the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace